in the yeah. print that it's going to be an ad. Okay. Yeah. That's what I want to make sure. <clears throat> student outcome won't change until adult behavior change. Yeah, and right. I just want to make sure that is included in the statement. Okay. So can we just put can we put the, all that governance stuff, Lone Star governance right after we we believe stuff? Mm -hmm. okay. 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 Ethics for school board members, uh, those are the ones that are in policy now, and there's no changes recommended to that. Did anybody have everybody have a chance to read those? No good. I did. All right, let's go now to board operating procedures, the actual ones, on page five. And I know that as we go through this, we have also received the two beginning in December, the latest uh, uh, board update 109 that was from this last legislative session that does have some changes in it that will be in policy as well for legal and local that have to do with some of the governance. I, 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 and we've included those in here. So, uh, let's look at the first paragraph where we have the, uh, the same paragraph that we had in the old one, but we were saying the place of more applicable language from Lone Star Governance. Now again, I mean, we can leave that and we can put some more language from Lone Star Governance if you feel <coughs> about that. You want to read that for a moment and see how you feel. That's A1, right? No, she's just talking Just add, add that or just add? Add it, add it to this. Add. And that may be a perfect place to put adult behaviors until adult behaviors change and student outcomes won't. Student outcome change student outcomes won't change until adult behavior. That might be a good paragraph to put that in. Anybody else? Anna? For first paragraph, I'm fine. All right. Then we go down to the Macarish IC Board of Trustees will adopt these guidelines. And the, num the first one's developing the board meeting agenda. So we have, uh, Kelly has marked through these items and now it's reflecting the, the newest BE legal and local that's coming out right. with 109. Yeah, these aren't recommendations. No, they're not. Yeah. This is just what your existing policy says. And okay. so this is how, quote unquote, off your board operating procedures were right. from your local policy language. And so that's why I felt like let's do it in track changes mode so that you can see what's the difference and decide for yourself which which ones you like because you may decide you want to change policy at some point. I, I circled item on item A3, second to last word. It says near future. I'm uncomfortable with near future. I would like to define near. Do you want it more? I, I had exactly the same thing I underlined. It says, what do you mean exactly? Next board meeting or mm -hmm. what? Let's define what that is. It's right here. And just for historical perspective, when was the last time A1, 2, or 3 were addressed or changed by a board or do we know? Uh, uh, December of 15. December 15. The last version. Okay. And before that was 2011. I also have a question. It says, my, my uh, so-called uh, comment was, uh, what appropriate time means? Parenthesis, next board meeting, for example. Uh, at times, there are some information that we request, and public needs to know the answers as well. So I don't know if I make any sense. You do. Uh, what 
what I've seen in this policy is a, pretty much that same language uh, because it gives the board president the time to, um, if you if you put if you say it will be on the next meeting and you define it that way, yeah. there's times that it can't be on the next meeting right. because of it depends on what the topic is. Okay. It could be more than what we can deal with that sure. night, or we don't have the information, or whatever. So, if you want to define it some other way, but it, it, you can it, also it say, say at the next regularly scheduled meeting, meeting because or you something. may have a special mm -hmm. meeting. Yeah. That I think that would sound better. That's next regular scheduled, 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 scheduled meeting yeah. yeah. makes a lot more sense than just in the near future. That's, so that's what I put next regular meeting. Before the next regularly scheduled. Yes. Mm. Appropriate time in. Why, Mr. Mr. Green, you had an objection to that? Or? I, I, I just, I'm just, you're, you're making these rules not just for this board, for, but for, for, for potentially future boards. And uh, uh, having been having been board president before, it uh, you got you got to have some flexibility. Uh, now you could have a. I could foresee in the future you might have a rogue board member <coughs> wanting to do all kind of stuff out there, and it, uh, it need a little bit of flexibility from the board. I, board. I disagree with that standpoint. I've heard more than once, Steve. You say it says I have to put it on the agenda, but it doesn't say when I have to put it on the agenda, and I think that is an erroneous approach um, we should govern openly and if there's a topic that needs to be discussed let's let's discuss it openly and the majority of the board will will vote accordingly I mean, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna make my stand on this I just that was my opinion so, <laughs> I have four schedules of deliberation no later than the next regular scheduled board meeting and then if it's um, you know, certainly if it's abused, you can always go back and you can require that two board members have to request something for it to be on the next. You know, you can always tweak it if you feel like it's, you know, not working to your advantage. I think if after appropriate time you put during or before the next regular scheduled board meeting, it gives you flexibility to do a special meeting also. So it would read, schedule for deliberation at an appropriate time during or before the next regularly scheduled board meeting. So that gives the flexibility to, it might not even be put off till the next regular mm -hmm. board meeting. It might be something that's important enough to take up on a special meeting. You good with that? Yes. All right. <coughs> All right, items eligible for closed meeting at BEC legal and local. So again, uh, uh, most of the items were struck out because it did not match the, the uh, policies. And so, um, if you'll read that, take the time to read that. Number six is because it gives you an affirmative defense. Um, and so, if there's ever a question, <coughs> I can shoot you an email in a nanosecond that just will protect you in, in that way, even if I'm wrong, if you act in good faith based on the advice of legal counsel that you can talk about something in closed session, um, it's a affirmative defense to any kind of criminal prosecution. So that's why number six is important. Is that, um, Anything on number one? Posted agenda. Number two. On this one, I, I marked um, on item five, uh, the last sentence that says, this will not occur without prior, without providing prior notice to the superintendent sufficient that the superintendent can have staff and or the information necessary to address the trustee's question. While I agree with that, again, I don't think that we've defined what sufficient is. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me think about that. This guy's help. Yeah, take it. 
where this language came from. And you guys did spend some time debating that. Yeah, I mean, what is what is sufficient? Is sufficient, I, you know, 20 I minutes? is sufficient Not 20 minutes. well that's that, that's that's and that's my exact point yeah. is is i think we need to we need to define that yeah. so let's let, uh, you know i agree it, with that it, it, it yeah. is a would you say it may depend on what's yeah. being requested i yeah. think it depends on the research that you yeah. may have to do to and, get the and data yes, when it, sometimes when y'all request something i can go pull it from my computer in 10 minutes mm -hmm. and the other ones if it's requiring um several departments to come together and us to research the project, then it could take days. So it just depends if we if we could write this in a way that it's flexible to allow for that. I mean you, you can write it in such yeah. a way that it gives you the discretion and I to determine that to determine all. whether or yeah. not you had sufficient time, whether it's five minutes or five yeah. hours. You could change the language in there that says prior notice to the superintendent sufficient that in the superintendent's of belief it can be it can be addressed at this meeting. You can do it like that, and, and well, then, and at what and point was it? Is it come that maybe something needs to be pulled and held to the next meeting yeah. as well? You know, sure. Um, but it's just defining that. That's very broad. I don't. I think you could argue what sufficient is. So if we can write it another way, and so the Pam, did you have a recommendation for you not to be? No, quiet. I just felt like it needed to be defined. It, for me not <laughs> to, <laughs> not for me not to get ask for a report that's going to take days of research to be done in 24 hours. What? And if I can I have open communication, which I do with you and say, and I have said, there's just no way we can get this done at this time, but we can get it done by in four weeks or something like that because I know what it's going to take from the staff. How could you word it to where Number three. whatever question we ask you, you have time to be able to answer the question in, public, in a public meeting right. without having to say I can't answer that question. You, you add the language that says, this will not occur without providing prior notice to the superintendent mm -hmm. sufficient that the superintendent believes the superintendent can have staff and her information at the meeting necessary to address the trustee's question. You can, you, it's a little duplicitous, but you can phrase it in such a way and leave the discretion. So if you approach her 30 minutes before the meeting and she can get a quick answer and deal with it, fine. If it's five hours, fine. But if she says that's a ten-hour project, you can't do it in five hours, then fine. But it's you're leaving it to the head person's discretion if that's okay with you. I mean, I know in some cases I've had to say, you know, we don't have right now the systems in place to pull that, so it's going to take time to go through folders or whatever like that. And I know that, so I can certainly give you the reasons why. Most of it we've been able to get. It's just there's been some that have taken time. And it also depends on the time of year. Mm -hmm. if, you know, if you're o opening school and you're trying to get first paychecks out and everything and it requires <laughs> GW lab and then you, I get a huge report, I can't stop the staff from doing <coughs> the pay, paychecks. I can put that off till later. You bet. Yeah, that type of thing. I just seem to be able to. Uh, you look, look at me hard. Uh, uh, I was just thinking, it, usually when we put something on the consent, if we, if we want it on the agenda, we already have the information, the information ready this to is give. If, if they request it and we're not ready for it yet. Okay, yep. so it's not like, no. it's not the normal we're putting consent. It on the agenda, we're, we know we got to gotcha. get this ready. Gotcha. It's, it's yeah. been planned out over time. It's if you need information for something, and it, I just need to be able to look at the scope of it. Well, I think this went back to our discussion at that workshop. Did, it, am I wrong that where you were? wanting no item to be pulled from consent unless you had received notice by say the Monday before the meeting or three days prior to the meeting or something like that, wasn't it? Yeah, this is consent. Yeah, it is. This is consent. Right. It, was, it was definitely, the, it was pulling it from the consent. Okay, that's right. And this whatever is consent. was in the board packet was you. insufficient to answer the that's right. I'm question. Sorry. I'm sorry, so the trustee topics. pulls it because he or she wants more information, but and the superintendent doesn't have, right. have this that is person consistent. there right. or that document there. Right. So that's the scenario that you're trying to avoid. Right. And I'm giving sufficient time to get you know, and as and maybe that's twenty four hours that, that there's an intent to at least an, an intent know. to pull. I, I'm nervous about saying that it cannot be pulled because you never know when something may be, need to be pulled for another reason. But you know, we've done that. Yes, the too. way the way it's written, 
it, the way it's written, it, as it is right now, it's kind of your discretion as to what sufficient is. Well, that's my point. <laughs> it well, needs to be, be defined. That, that, well, that should, <laughs> that's probably the way it should be. Well, depends. I mean, I think that any, again, I go back to, you know, you could, she may not always be in that seat. This is, this is an open-ended document, and you may have somebody there that, you know, well, I didn't have sufficient time to respond to that, so we if won't discuss it. They you know? use it, we put it on the next meeting and take care of it. <laughs> well, you I'm, give me sufficient time too. No, I'm just. No, I'm I, thinking now that if you're asking for a prior notice, that means before the board meeting. I'm thinking. So if, let's just let's define what that is. Three, I mean, if, like, if, 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 if I have 24 hours. Let's say three days. 24 hours. That's, 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 all, all, I'm, yeah, that's all I'm asking for, for three is days to define what it is. 24 days. hours if, prior. If you know that you are going to pull something and you need more information, and you let me know in 24 hours, I, I'm not saying I can get it done in 24 hours. I'm saying you well, give me that's the problem. Me. You, you don't want to put something in writing that, says that you can't do. That do right. That you yeah. can't deliver. How many days in advance? Well, she always has the option do to pull it, pull it for the next That's meeting. what I'm saying. Seven, Seven days? days. Yeah. So three days in advance. I like that. <clears throat> three days in advance. If they pull it, give you prior notice three days in advance, then you can have it. Because our agenda is out, what, seven days? Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. but that's not. Who, does, who, who makes it all the way through the agenda? You know, the thing what, what, I'm what she's asking. saying is she can pull it on her own anyway so that if you give her 24 hours notice and she knows that she can't get it done in 24 hours I she, can just, know. she can just pull it and inform us that she pulled it because if it's a big enough lift, and we've had some that you know requires a lot more investigation if I can't get that done in 24 just hours I need to gym. pull it and let our y'all pull it and if you're asking me more questions about it and give me time I can say I can have That's that good. to you in 24 hours or it's going to go on the next agenda because I don't have the manpower right now to do it. All right. That's all I'm, I am just wanting that. Well, I get, I get point and Sandra, it's usually somebody asking, yeah. they already have the information, maybe there's some extra information yeah. they needed. That's right. And so then they have it a week in advance, so That's surely right. within a few days of getting that information, right. they say, I'd like to know X, Y, and Z prior. Right. And, them and of course, no any time you see it, the earlier you do it, the better you know, chances mm -hmm. I can do that. If you're happy with 24 hours, I'm happy. Because if I have that flexibility just to come back and say, hey, uh, I know what you want, but I can't do it in that time period, I'll put it on the next one and get that to you. That's good. That's good. Okay? All right. Make sure that's spelled out in there. Okay. I got it. Okay. All right. All right. So then we go down. These all done. Um, <coughs> situations where and we had this come up recently that we literally received the information at the meeting and and it's hard to ask questions about that information then because well in that case Sandra had not even had an opportunity to review the the material so it would not be <coughs> fair of me to sit there and begin to question you on a document that you also did not receive prior to the meeting so how do we address that issue and then let me give you another one, like scores that we have this year. Because our board meetings don't always run coincide with, with the scores, we have to wait until literally the week that we're going to have the board meeting, which you've already received the packet, to pull the scores together. So you can't see them in ahead of time. I mean, there's just no way we can, mm -hmm. the way that the benchmarks are aligned. So, you know, and what you don't want to do is put them out too far. Because if you do that, then we're making the decision too late. But the wording is, it's, you shall make every effort. That's, yeah, that's, that's Correct. The and, and, and that's not <laughs> what I'm saying. I'm saying, how do you deal with those issues where, because we did not get the information in time, we are not able to really have discourse the way a board should on that item because it's not, it's not fair of me as a board member if you've not had that opportunity either. <coughs> So how do we address that? That's just a question I'm asking. I think we did last time. Well, well, well but, like they, but like the, the but we timeline. that right in that case, on the timeline. We had a time deadline that was sensitive right. in that particular case. And but you know, how often does that come up? Quite frequently, we're told we have to vote on this at this meeting because of a timeline. Because of a timeline. 
And like I said, the scores are just the way they, I mean, I can't get them to you. They're not there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we need, but we need to look at them at that board meeting mm -hmm. to stay on track, you know? If I put that scores off to another board meeting, which it will run into your problem. Are what you if, allowed to supplement your board materials prior to the meeting without violating any policies? Are they making a special meeting after that? That has nothing to do with the, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. then, I just, if, if you get them, no, sir, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Like in, in the case of Pam saying, I mean, at some point in time, earlier today than the day before, you got that look. Except for we did. She walked, she walked in, in with, with him. With him. Okay, bad, <laughs> bad example. So, yeah, I guess you could have walked yeah. yeah, so that's for, true, but well, then you can't. You can basically can't. You know, the administration is doing the best they can. Knowing the board's desire to have the information, as Pam mentioned, so we can look and it over. Right. And that's, you know, in those situations, Lisa just, you know, so get like this one was, I mean, that was. Those books in her hand. Yeah, she yeah. did. So, like, Sammy, you, with the scores, when we get Joel in here to you know, help with that, yeah. if we even get them the day the of or the yeah. day before, if we shoot them on to you, at least you mm -hmm. might be able to look at them. Yeah. Okay. Because okay. I don't want to put those on. And normally on the audit, I get a PDF before yeah. I did it. Right. So, so. so she get a discount on that book. <laughs> <laughs> we don't like to do But normally, but normally I do in, in the past. I'm not. Uh, and as a result, now, now some the, issues that could be very important issues go undiscussed right. because. Now the discuss like the scores, um, we examine those ahead of time. As soon as we get them, we examine them. But uh, to send them to y'all, uh, it's just late. And so just pulling the cumulative, because they the test occur over a range of times. So second grade might not be with third, fourth. It's just pulling them all together. But we'll, we'll get them to you as soon as we can. Y'all can take that and take the summary and then we'll discuss it later. And try to avoid it at every time. But whenever the company does that, we're just kind of like. So if something else, ha it, uh, let's put it like this. If, we, if there's an item that's going to be put on and we can put it off, because we don't have the information and it's not on their timeline, we won't put it on there until you've had time. We're going to show that. Mm -hmm. And go the ver vice versa direction. When you know there's a timeline, make sure to allow, you know, if it's a, I, I, I can think of different purchasing things and stuff like that. And they're like, no, we have to do it now. We have to do it now. Well, why didn't you bring it to us a month ago? Any other development because there's some. It's, well, she's it's, talking about purchasing things. Right. Yeah. Well, well, the only thing yeah. I can think of is like if there's an emergency repair or something, and they have to pay. Yeah, that's a different emergency repair is completely different. Mm -hmm. We used to get several of them, those under Max. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we'll do what we can on that, and we'll see how it goes. Okay, but uh, but we'll get it to you as fast as we can. Uh, so what are we saying here? The administration shall make every effort to make meeting materials available to each board member at least six calendar days before each regular meeting, including the final agenda and any documents or materials related to items on the agenda. Okay. And there's no language at all about special meetings <laughs> in your policy, so that's why I put lines. So do you want to say anything there? Wait, where are you? Oh, you're up at D. Okay. E. 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 No, your E is preparation and delivery of the uh -huh. board packet. You just said something about special meetings? Right. Oh, delivery of the board yeah. packet for special yeah. meetings. Yeah. Add special in the first sentence, too. Special and regular meetings. Just special Say meetings. the same thing. Make the same thing. But do you know about special meetings? Special meetings are call meetings. You may not have six days. Yeah, you only have to do three, right? You only have to do three. So maybe do number two the same, but make it at least three. Not be included in every effort? Every effort is in the word. Uh, every effort. Mr. H. shall make every effort. Or just, yeah. At least three days. Now, I will tell you. Now, I think Gray and I would agree on this one. That if, if it's a special calls meeting, that's for a reason we know. And we're going to most likely have those materials ready. I mean, that's one that we're, we're calling it because of a purpose that we have in hand. So we wouldn't be. We shouldn't call the meeting until we have the stuff ready, really. And it might also be something that if there's going to be board action taken. Sometimes we have special meetings just for information items right. and things like that. If there's going to be action taken by the board, they, they need to have their information ahead of time to make a good decision. So that could also layer into that. All right, we got okay. Cancellation of meetings. I think 
as we all know, I, I feel like it should require more than one person to change your, the meeting date of a regular meeting at least. I know that Holly is um, usually calling everybody to see when it's convenient or when the dates can match up. And I, and I also feel the same way because I think when one, one person makes a decision, then we're held. At, I'm pretty flexible when it comes to coming to meetings and I try to be at the meetings when possible. But there may be a time when I need to be at the meeting and I may not be able to be there because of circumstances. And I'd like to be able to say, well, you know, I can't make it. And it's not just for me, but I mean, all of us go through that as board members. Uh, Again, I think the commitment of us being board members, we come to the meetings when we're supposed to be here for the meetings, but those circumstances do arise and, and we have to figure some way that it can be at least together. Uh, and I don't know how we would word that because it, it's not gonna be an easy thing to do, <laughs> you know. And I don't know what, if there's a, yeah, what other boards do would be interesting as well. I'm not sure I'm necessarily for changing it because I don't think that decision should be made without the consensus of at least the majority. Uh, I know the time that I changed the meeting, I had a majority consensus. And so I think in good taste, you know, nobody's going to change a meeting without at least having the majority present may not get everybody because there's gonna come a time when you know we're not gonna always always be here I mean there are gonna be meetings we're not we just can't make it can but we, I, but I just put a number two in here that changes should be rare <laughs> define rare <laughs> well, <ch> <laughs> we should make very few changes just put it something in there I don't know. Well, I mean, we got we got to change next month's meeting. But we also have meetings where it's critical that all board members are present, and right. and if we keep changing the meeting, then then we set it, and then if somebody knows, like I know that I have this meeting on a certain date, I'm not going to try to change it to make it convenient. If I have something else to do, I'm going to be here because I know it's going to be a critical meeting to be at. And so, I mean, I, that's the way I look at it. I just, you know, if. if if we have a commitment, we have to have a commitment to be here when we need to make some serious decisions or some important decisions. Now, these informational meetings that we have and stuff, I think they're a little bit more flexible in terms of if I can't be here because something's got scheduled to be, right. that's a little bit different. But I think in the critical part of our meetings when we make decisions mm -hmm. that are critical, I, I don't, I just think I we need that commitment. From my experience, you're talking about <coughs> regular meetings are set at a location and time and for a reason. That's for the community and everybody to know. Right. So you wouldn't change that unless it's a literal, I mean, an emergency. Absolute emergency. And, and define absolute emergency because that's what we get into in that situation. Well, I think the first part of that sentence kind of takes all this out of play because what we're looking at right now, it sounds like we're saying one person can decide what they do it, but it says right. for the convenience of board members. So if, if it's not really. If but together that's my, has an issue that's with it, my point. Then he can. Gray, we had a it. we had a, a a regular meeting that was moved during the business day when people when when the most of the general public are at work and couldn't attend, and that was done at the discretion of one person. And when and when asked about that, they quote back to this policy saying that per, one person has the authority to do that. But that one person contacted every board member. But it wasn't a unanimous consensus because well, I mean, I don't think it was a majority. Okay. That one, and I mean, I want to be fair. It wasn't a decision I made without contacting and talking with other board members, and it was for the <coughs> convenience of not just me, but even other board members that had it not been moved, would not have been able to attend that particular meeting. And, and I don't have a problem if that's what we're going to do, but I still, I think I have to echo what Pam says, that if we're gonna change a board meeting when the public can't be there, that's not a good thing. I'm not in agreement with that because we have to allow the public to be here for those meetings whenever we have. 
and that was I mean that we got, I got a lot of phone calls regarding that the public was like again transparency to me that we don't have a board meeting when other people can't attend from the public and that's just that's my feeling and and I think that's in, that's critical in terms of transparency to the community so that's where I, that's my that's my opinion and that's what I think Thank most you. times that I've seen the policies that I've seen are written like this mm -hmm. everyone I just don't think it should be changed. I mean, that, that's the way I've seen I haven't seen it written any other way. But I think it comes down to what's the real reason for the, 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 uh, the need to be changed, and it needs to be very important to change the rail movement at the same time that proper notice is given you know, it's in time for people to know. How often does it even occur? It's happened once. That's what I'm saying. I can't think of another time that it should, has occurred has occurred at all. I think the language is appropriate and then like Russell said and others, it's happened once and the board understands that. Uh, the understanding is that the board is informed, so we're up there also for the public to have the opportunity. Comments like tonight, we're gonna to change some regular meeting date mm -hmm. because of the calendar and where the holidays fall. Yeah. I mean, that's just. Okay. You wanna move on? BED legal and local, and that's for public participation during board meetings. A school board meeting is a meeting of board trustees held in public, not a meeting of the public. And that's where we get, you know, there is confusion sometimes. I mean, it is it, it for the public to see, but it is a meeting of the board. And so, um, hence the audience participation of the board meeting is limited to the public comment portion of the meeting designated for that purpose. So these are some of the things that were put in uh, according to BED legal and local. At regular meetings, the board shall allot 30 minutes to hear persons who desire to make comments to the board. No presentation shall exceed three minutes. We do that now. Delegations of more than five minute persons shall appoint one person to present their views before the board. We, we do that now. This is all your policy. Yeah. This, 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 this is what your policy says. So this is your opportunity to review right. and decide if you like what you have. Right. But your board operating procedures did not have all of start a discussion right. if it's not on the agenda and some districts will have um, two two different types of public forums sometimes they'll have a comment section that deals just with agenda items and that will be at the beginning of a board meeting because you want to hear what the community has to say about your agenda items and then if they're and then they would have a follow-up public comment at the conclusion of the meeting that would be on non-agenda items that would be pertinent for considering placing on a future agenda item. I've seen that. Um, and one of the things I, you know, I'm just going to bring out here while she's talking about that. Is, is very common. Yeah. When, if, if we're doing, if we're continuing this process the way it is, <clears throat> I think we've got to control some situations. I'm just, this is from me viewing what I'm seeing compared to some other situations in districts. Since it is a, a meeting of the board and we're to keep it in control, 
there are times when if people get up and start speaking to the audience and walking around and speaking to the audience, that's not really supposed to happen. Like it says in when dressing the board trip, person should stand at the podium and face the board because they're, they're dressing y'all, not, not the audience out here. And so that those kinds of things need to be kept in control. And I'm just telling you because if you watch some of them on, on uh, videos and stuff and, and then experience some that have gotten out of hand, it's because you allow something like it to start happening, which angers people, and then you get some crazy stuff going on. I did find some, some more um, direct language in some of the policies that addressed complaints against employees that basically just said, you don't get to talk about any, any issue of concern about an employee period. Um, you have to utilize Supposed to refer people to proper complaint procedure right. policy if they're there to complain about employee, employee or employees or administration mm -hmm. or for that matter really even probably board members is appropriate. Mm -hmm. You're allowing the public to blindside folks and you're keeping people on the board from factually being able to correct it when yes, it's wrong. Because they're not and aware. so because you're not aware of it. So you can you can up the time on the on the subject and the sign up electronically or otherwise, which helps give some notice. And you can have a procedure to enforce folks who are going outside the true complaint process to complain about something that needs probably some administration, factual investigation mm -hmm. to respond mm -hmm. so that it can be responded to appropriately at the appropriate occasion. I think this is the language you're talking about. The board will not entertain complaints or criticisms about individual employees or other complaints during this portion of the meeting. And if the presiding officer determines that a presentation during this portion of the meeting is a complaint about an individual school employee, or any other matter, he will respectfully ask the person to stop speaking and to use the board's adopted policies and procedures for bringing complaints or concerns to the board as a matter placed on the agenda for a future meeting. So maybe this or language similar to what Reverend Urban reads, if it's part of your board's operating procedures, he would feel more comfortable jumping in and saying, well, if these are our procedures and, and you have the discretion to say this is a complaint. Ms. Smith, I, I do want to remind you that this is our policy as a board, and if the board chooses, we can take completely the public comment section out of the policy, if that's what the board likes. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I don't think I'm in favor of that. I, I, my question would be is, okay, if people have to sign up to make a comment, a public comment, when they sign up, is there a part on that form that says what they're going to be speaking yes. about? Okay, so then if they're doing it right before the board, seems to me like if there's going to be an issue about what might be <coughs> commented on maybe we need to push the time back for when they come and they sign up to be able to do the public comment so that then in turn if there's a situation that needs to be discussed for example on an employee complaint or whatever then they can do that without having to bring it to they public comment yeah. they, yeah. they don't mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. no. okay it doesn't always identify I do, I, more, even if they address us, we can't respond. Well, uh, yeah, uh, but I think that the, that the, the public, I mean, if we have that public comment, I think that's been a good process for community people to say whatever they think. We don't have to be in agreement with it, but it's their right to say what they need to say, and we can't respond to it, but at least they get that opportunity to voice whatever they need to voice, as long as it's within the realms of the, what the, the policy is and what they can say and what they can't say. I mean, and, and I guess... One thing I've often felt sitting over here is, is I, I, I am vocal when I see a legal concern, when I see the potential that someone is making a statement at the podium at either our request or that we're allowing them to do so that could potentially defame another individual or an employee or violate confidentiality of a student. Um, but that's a legal concern. 
is what you want to hear and how you want your BGBA local and your FNG interpreted because those are your complaint policies. And just like Reverend Herman said, as long as you have those complaint policies, you don't even have to have public forum. Public forum is supposed to, to be those that have public forum is to supplement your complaint policies. So when they come to the podium, they should never be complaining about a teacher or an employee or a decision, or you know, it could be a vendor that could come to the podium and you have complaint policies for vendors as well. So it's supposed to supplement your complaint policies where they're bringing information to your attention that um, you may, may not otherwise know or you know, actually bragging you know, about something that they saw or did um, and wanted you to be aware of. And so um, you just, I just kind of want to make sure you're aware that just because I'm not screaming or jumping out of my seat doesn't mean that you can't require less at your podium. You can, you're interpreting your complaint policies and by shutting a speaker down, your board president can do that or any one of you can do that if you feel like they've, um, that it's really a complaint or a criticism that needs to go through your grievance. Well, most of them. Most of the comments from the podium are criticisms, for the large part. Well, I mean, I've heard some comments, some pretty nice comments I about programs most. that's tough that we've had, you know, that something that the school is doing good in programs or teachers. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think it just allows the, the public to, to make those kind of comments. And, I, and, you know, if it's a complaint or if it's criticism, well, you know, if the shoe fits, wear it. If it doesn't, then we don't need to worry about it. That's the way I look at it. I mean, that's just that's just where I'm coming from. Well, because that's the problem. You don't know anything about the shoe or the size of it until it starts talking at the podium. It's right. really not fair to the administration under the complaint process. Okay. And, less, and so if you want to have a healthy balance and allow the public to speak and speak their mind and good, bad, or different, if it's going to be something critical that's not positive, there should be some sort of reasonable procedure for the administration be able to get that, evaluate it, be able to respond to it, or go through the procedure. It may get handled outside of here and not being made a huge issue and not get resolved with the person that has it. And that's why I was saying the time before, yeah. just signing up right before the meeting, then we don't know that, okay? But if they have some per, some time back, that's what I'm saying, like the day of the meeting, that by 12 o'clock noon or something like that, where you have an idea of what's going to be made yeah. comments about, then they can deal with that. But I think right before the meeting signing up, then that's probably, we don't know what's going to happen when they sign up. So. Mr. Russell, if, if the criticism sometimes is valid, it gives us an opportunity to work on it. And if it's not valid, just we heard it and they express themselves and God bless. You get that opportunity anyway if the proper procedures are followed. <coughs> right. Because it's reported up the channels, just like you'll see when if board members are approached with certain complaints, how you're supposed to channel them and where they go. There's right. There's procedures for those to be handled and dealt with. And I would suggest and say, if somebody in the public follows the proper procedures and channels and they feel like right. they're dissatisfied with the result and the answer, mm -hmm. then I, I, could, I could see that might become an issue that maybe needs to come before and debate it in public and try to get to the bottom of it if it truly wasn't satisfied and they still feel aggrieved to some sort and they follow their mm -hmm. procedures. But I just think you need to have a fair, reasonable balance as to, as to what you're allowing to go through those channels what you who and what you're allowed to respond. And I think it sounds like other it sounds like this is not unusual with other people. Well other school boards are doing it. But They're pulling public so comment from the agenda. Off, uh, negative comments or anything. It's just that if they if they sign up ahead of time like you're mm -hmm. talking about if we get the information and I don't even know about it and it will come up there I I mean I can't answer a voice for the fact because I don't even know about it. But if we got the information early enough and I can get the facts, I could even respond to that individual, and they, you know, it may satisfy or not, but, uh, but at least I've got a chance to gather information and give them facts, and, and even at the night, that night, if they still got the stuff, I've got facts to give y'all, because you're saying I can answer with facts. So why don't we, why don't we it, it, it seems very, to me, when I hear things like that, that you're very much trying to, um, discourage public discourse um, and I for one I think it's valuable for people to have a avenue uh, just as Mr. Montoya and, and Mr. Nermont have said 
to express their opinion. I mean, I think that's a basic tenet that our country was founded on, you know, freedom of speech. We don't always have to agree, and I, even on this board, I mean, we're all friends, but we don't always agree on every item. Right. But we don't uh, we don't disrespect each other for that. We can we move forward and respect that we have differences of opinion. I think the same is true for the people who come forward and and maybe they're critical of a decision this board has made. I think we should offer them that same respect. We we can't expect that 100% of the folks in the community are going to agree with every decision, but we do uh, owe them the respect to listen to their perspective, in my opinion. Ms. Bitch, I'm, I'm, if I'm, I ask I'm, you a question, I expect an answer. If they ask us a question, we can't answer. If they, whatever they we say cannot, to us, we, 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 we cannot, just have to be null and We more. can't answer in public <coughs> meeting. It does not mean but they are addressing that, the that, board. that that issue is not investigated or looked at after the meeting or that Miss Dowdy doesn't follow up and look into those issues, which she often does and often comes back and, and updates us on. But if there's been uh, misinformation, that misinformation can take on a life of its own before any of that occurred. And as we know with the internet and everything else, I mean, I've had people call me and say, I can't believe they're gonna do this. Either the school's gonna do this in this location and I've got it from good sources and it turns out there was never anything like that contemplated. Somebody started somewhere, and they put it on the internet, and it went around, and all of a sudden it became the norm people were talking okay. about. You're this. never going to discontinue so, rumors. Yeah, so I the mean, same thing can happen, so why there should be some reasonable way for people to look at and address it. And you're not squelching them from the process. Right. You're just, you're, in all fairness, being able to respond and address the concern. I'm, I'm and we can respond on a factual <laughs> policy basis. So if the factual information is incorrect, we can respond according to if, our if attorney. If it's something that the information that they have that they were able to go get and determine that it was going to be factually incorrect, but many times that's not the case. So. What, what if we get, they told, said that public information needed, that we signed them up electronically 20, and had to sign up 24 hours ahead of the meeting? Maybe some people have no access to electronic, Mr. Green. There are some people who they don't. They get off work, come here. The existing situation. They can come up here and sign up. Well, the existing situation that we have, Mr. Green, I know uh, uh, Reverend Irvin read exactly those uh, statements. You got three minutes. You cannot mention people's name, face the, the podium. Uh, you mentioned all those. And as far as uh, questioning, I never heard anybody question. They expressed themselves and walked out. Well, there have been, we have received questions. But we just couldn't respond. The, I, okay, the, we may interpret those as a question, but what I heard every time I was here, if they expressed themselves, this is what I fail and walked out. No, a well, lot of times it's it rhetorical. Right. It's just like, you know, I mean, it may not be a question like they're saying, I want you to respond right now, especially when they've announced that you can't respond, but it may be very critical and rhetorical of the administration. You know, and yeah. there's specific examples. Why don't you do this? You know, mm -hmm. It's rhetorical because they're trying to say, my opinion is something should be done like this. I think y'all should pay attention to it. Well, let's be honest. We have pretty much immune to their response because after they express themselves, walk out, we'll never discuss any part of it anyways. Uh, that's as honest as I can be. That's right. It's not on the agenda. Okay. We so we'll let, them, to don't let them do it? <laughs> well, let's move on, guys. Go I, ahead. The only reason I said 24 hours is it gives you a chance to research whatever they're complaining is, I mean, and, I would, and give I, you some time to do it. You might even resolve the issue before it ever comes to the, to the board. I mean, I would love to know topics, if, if I could, because if it's something that's critical, I need to have some information to give you all. So like what you were talking about, Farsh, like we don't discuss it because it isn't on the agenda, right. but I try to get back to y'all, because if, if, if there's a, through the emails or whatever, because if there's some topic that comes up that's all of a sudden I've not even heard of, I try to research it out to mm -hmm. give you the information. The, the part that I don't give is that uh, to the public that hears it. That, that's where I don't, I'm not able to come right. back and respond to. And so they hear me. That's the only part that bothers me. I believe in the openness and the whole bit. Right. What I watch though is when people come in to say, see their kids perform. Mm -hmm. And so we have the public comment and they don't come very often. They just come to watch their kids perform. 
So they hear the whatever topic and they go away immediately when their kids leave and they're like, wow, did, I mean, is that true? You know, and so forth. Because I'm not able to reach all those people that heard that and give them an answer. That's my only But we can put public comment wherever we want to on the agenda, right? That you can put it anywhere you want. Okay, so we, it'd be all right to move it, right? You wouldn't have a problem with that, would you? I do because some people have family. They have to go take care of their children. They can't sit here all day, all night until we get ready for them to listen to them. They have family. They have children. They ta they're taxpayers. They have concerns. Uh, so do we. I'm I, we volunteer. I'm ready to go now. We volunteer <laughs> to sit here and listen to them. I think Sammy is tired. She ain't working all day. Well, after. that goes with her territory. Because we were in a quandary with that. When we had the people come perform or do whatever, we, we can move it to after that. We don't want them to stand up right. for two forever while we go for everything else. So we moved it this last time right, right after. We'll look at it. Yeah. Well, is the administration going to come up with some additional recommendations for this section? Yeah. I, I just noticed that I thought we needed to add something more definitive about, we needed to add something about personnel because there's no reference at all, but yet you say it. And don't take me wrong, I'm a firm believer we should not mention anybody's name or address it in such a way that uh, it's without saying the name, you know who they're talking. I, I'm firm. How are you going to tell the public that? Yeah. Yeah. When, when they get in front of that mic, there's no controlling them. That's I it. Had, I had another concern on item F. It wasn't redlined, but it was um, lined out. Uh, the last part of that sentence it says unless requested by the presiding officer and this basically is the the one area where it says that the presiding officer can ask or can maybe ask a question of somebody that's here in the audience maybe we want to hear from you know uh, the athletic director or something like that so I didn't quite know why that was scratched out and, and I'm a little uncomfortable with saying that we can't call on anybody from the audience because we well, may have a question. to be responding. Again, this is in public comment. This isn't on an agenda item. Okay. So I, I completely agree on agenda items. You should be able to call sure. any of It's when it's public comment. It's like I said, when you're not addressing the board or if you're allowing somebody to start turning around and asking somebody, that's when you lose control of the board. Okay. We don't want to get into that. This actually at all other times during the meeting, so it's yeah. not referring <coughs> strictly to. Yeah. And, and I That's think that correct. kind of takes away all's ability to ask a principal or somebody in the audience, how's this working? Well, that's you my point is I want to be able to that's, have. That's just the definition. That's the word. And that's normally the president uh, usually. Say that again. That's the word audience. The intention of the word audience and the policy is not. It's not, not administration or staff. Yes. Right. Can you, can you look at something? Can you, can you think of a scenario? Can we just, ask? well, I don't know. Can we just scratch that whole, I mean, why do we need it then? Can we just scratch that whole F completely yeah, out? It seems superfluous. Billy, could we go back to E just for a minute? And just, you know, with our discussion, is it possible to do a little research and see what other districts are they handling it so we can be more fluent? Which more? one? Yes. About about the about what you can respond and how yes. to and, and under what guises. Because the way it's read right now, it's almost as if what's announced in the meeting is you only know, respond by referring it to policy. But then we've been kind of told behind the scenes that you know or that you know you can factually try to correct factual, but there's nothing in here about that uh, in detail. Um, I think it, it all comes back. To turn to your administration to deliver the factual information or refer them to the appropriate policy, but any kind of Q&A would equal a deliberation. Yes, okay. 
So no Q and A right. is the easy not part. With, right, not with the person at the podium. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then, as in other contexts, I know with newspapers and things, and I know we recently had a situation. I don't know that it's a wise idea to let someone get up and read something anonymous from someone else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's got all kinds of fraught with dangers in it. You know, newspapers float back and forth. But we used to have a deal with the paper here had the anonymous stuff, and then they stopped that by saying, if you weren't willing to sign your name on it, we shouldn't publish it type of deal. It, it's got the potential for abuse. And I'm not mm -hmm. saying that situation was that at all. I'm just saying, in general, I think the norm these days is we don't let folks just get up and put up these types of things and quote what they're calling an anonymous source. Mm -hmm. but, so I just put that out for your consideration. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. The bad thing is with Open Meetings Act, we're going by what it says we have to do if we allow public comment. They could literally get up and sing a song as long as they're not talking about something illegal or inappropriate that, we, that can't be addressed, they can do whatever they want for three minutes. Uh, now, if they break some of the laws, like they said, well, principal so-and-so did this to my kid or this teacher, you know, then you cut them off, say, I'm sorry, you're done, time's up. Uh, but other than that, once we open up to three minutes, they've well, got three minutes to say. Know, in all honesty, you've had folks stand up there that's had active litigation against the school district mm -hmm. and let them profess about the, their cases. In, in, in that in open session, that, how is that proper? I'm, I'm just saying, if they're not breaking some law about what the definition of, you know, implicating the personnel, but personnel decisions, things like that, they can kind of say what they want. And I'm afraid if we said, well, we're going to give that information early, and we'll decide whether you get to come up and talk or not, or we get more information about it. Um, I mean, it's kind of the, being up there or being down here. When somebody gets up there, you, you're just going to get ready. Is that clear? Very rarely if someone can get up and say, hey, y'all are doing a great job. I appreciate all y'all are doing that. That's once in a blue moon, unless you're paying them to do it, uh, they're going to come up and say that. They're going to come up and gripe about everything under the sun. And maybe something you've handled, maybe something you doesn't need to be handled, but you can't hardly control it once we've opened up. Open, open, is that not the really? I mean, you open it up, they pretty much. You're definitely creating this forum. Right. I mean, you know, it just all goes back to what the I think it's the consensus, pretty much that everybody want to kind of keep it a part of our procedure or policy. Um, so, are there any other concerns? Follow I, I follow our regular. I think, yeah. look, I think though, looking at, you might want to just research what he said. I think that was, uh, if somebody's got legal uh, litigation going against the district, I think that might be something to consider in our policy that says that. I don't think you need it in your policy. I think. Huh? I think I'd like to just see something more specific proposed by the administration that addresses some of the issues that that we've been having to deal with, and what's fair and reasonable, so that you're letting people say what they want to say, but you're also giving the administration a, a fair chance with some early, er, earlier notice to some extent that they can actually maybe answer some of the questions. Take care of some of the issues. Administration. If, if, it's, if it involves administration, and then, and then secondly, I think you need a little more detail as to the, the, the specific response, you know, that, uh, that people can respond to correct board members or president or. In other words, can respond to correct correct in other words let me find some more specifics yep. so that you yes. guys understand what your parameters are. In yeah, response. it seems kind of loosey goosey right now. So do we want to pull it off the agenda 
until it's revised? No. Mm -hmm. Leave it on there. Is those people who sign up to speak, do they put their full name and phone number? It's good to put phone number and address so they can contact. They put their address. I don't know about phone number. Do they put their phone number on there? They're not always completely filled in, but we can. I can revise yeah. the forms real quick. They, they, it, 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 one list I always got is, is the, it has their name and what the topic mm -hmm. is. All right. So we can come back to that at the next meeting when the rule of rules. Okay. Legal and local voting. The Robert's Rules of War. So before you get off that, we might want to make an, a, an action item at some point in time to relook at that public comment and then give you the, free, the freedom to make the procedures match our policy. That's all. Ms. Dada, we want to close at 8 o'clock. Okay, so, I'm hurrying and hurrying. So, so what okay. I was going to ask, I think they have read through it and maybe they can identify the ones they want to discuss sure. and that might I'll, save some I'll time. Stop being a teacher. No, because okay. <laughs> I, I know that they have, many of them have okay. taken their notes and okay. they have the ones they want to discuss. Okay. Let me, Mr. Coach Fosh. Yes, sir. Go ahead. I didn't ask. I, I, I didn't say anything. Well, I saw your <laughs> notes. He's asking oh, you if you had no, some, you I'm, want I'm, to discuss. I'm reading mine <laughs> to see. Okay. Some of it been. Uh, there was a question one time, is, uh, I guess a statement, uh, board member, there has to be two or more board member to ask for executive meeting. Could be one, was this a state law? Or? Yes. Special meeting. Special, special meeting. meeting. Or, or, or yeah, special reconvene meeting. another. No, not just one. Just, there has to be more than one. There has to be more than one. Okay. Which gives, I guess, credence to the, to the reason or the cause. All right. The, the reason I'm asking, in case there's a situation, I don't want to share it with someone else, would be violating the law. Okay. I will say that I, I was guilty, and every, I think every board president has been guilty of B. We always start the discussion before we have a, a motion and say, mm -hmm. well, that's easy to correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I had an issue on 4F. When a board member wishes to meet formally with any other district employee, the board member will inform the superintendent and on. And so, you know, formally is not really defined. And I think of a situation that's come up in the past where I would hate to see administration or anyone try to throw something like this in my face if a teacher comes to me to complain and make a complaint and argue about what's formal versus what's informal. and. And in fact, in the past, not this administration, but I've had administration tell me that I was not allowed to listen to teacher complaints, which I disagree with. And so I would like this one clarified and cleaned up to the extent uh, whether you're going to define formally or informally. I mean, I, I guess what this is meant to cover is if, is if a board member had some school district issue that was burning and forget that board member, they really want to meet with someone under you, it needs to go through you. It's business type. So I don't, I'm not sure what it means because we're not really supposed to be getting into the day to day business. So, Kelly, what's the purpose of right F? It's all under the policy title of And so it's supposed to be a limitation on it. And they can like revise it, they can rescind it. This was already in y'all's policy. I think the, when the board member wishes, it would be the board's initi initiation of the action. So if someone else initiated the action, that may not be there because of the term wishes. Well, if someone calls me up and says, mm -hmm. I teach over here and I'm very upset, I don't feel like I can go to my principal or Sandra Dowdy, can I come to your office? Is that formal or informal? And if I say, sure, I'd like to hear it, am I wishing, wishing to meet with them, right? You see what I'm saying? So now, now they're, 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 they're asking for the meeting still. I think this just was language with, within your existing um, operating procedures because I'm not finding it in your policy. When a board member wishes to meet Can formally. we just scratch it? Yeah, I don't like it. Yeah, I don't like it. Either. Just scratch it all scratch all that Scratch out. it all together. Which F. One? F. F. Um, board members, I would, I would like to... Um, Maybe it's in the form of a motion that we um, 
continue this discussion at another another meeting in light that we've been going on about three hours now and we still have some business on the agenda to go no it's okay I would rather I'd rather have another meeting and be fresh and I don't want to rush this process because this is a very important process but maybe we could table this at page eight and continue and ask the superintendent ask the superintendent to go ahead and schedule a another uh, special meeting to continue this just uh, this at a later date and, and the constraints because it's going to put a lot into it is it this constraints well, are in the, here the, uh -huh. I'll, I'll make a motion on that when we get to it okay, okay. right because y'all know i can go on now. i know okay. so there's a motion sammy, sammy is so tired <laughs> why am i so tired we have a motion on the floor. The second. Uh, could you repeat that motion again? <laughs> <laughs> that we, in light of the fact that we're uh, nearing our third hour and we get, we need to be fresh because this is important work that we are doing. That uh, we table this, the remainder of this, from page eight forward and ask the superintendent to schedule another special meeting in the, the within the next yeah. two weeks. Yeah. I don't know. Well, you buy for the first. It doesn't, it doesn't make much. It's holiday. In, in the near future. Okay. Yeah. Here's the second. Second. near. It is motion <laughs> by Ms. Fitch and second by Mr. Neal. Is there any discussion? Just for clarification, it will in also include the board constraints, right? That We're going to stop at page eight and go for it. All of that is after page eight. Is that right? I got your text, 11.36 That'll be the next, that'll PM. be the next item. We'll have is that what I, I missed that. Okay. Okay. So we're on B right now. Right. Okay. Is it possible to email it rather than text? Yes, there is. Please. I'm crazy about that text. I know you are. But <laughs> right. I can't get it, get we ready to pop in and going back again. We have a, um, a motion and a second. Are we ready to vote? I just wanted to make a request. Is the administration going to send us an updated version of before we meet next time with yeah, corrections to this point? Okay, yeah. great. Super. All right, all those in favor? No, what are we voting on? Dismiss the meeting, Steve. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, any opposed? The 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 all right, we have another agenda. Mr. Uh, President, I would make a motion that we table item C, consideration of board action on superintendent and board constraint progress measures till our next special meeting. Is there a second? A second. Motion by Ms. Fitch, second by Mr. Matoya, that we table item C to the next meeting. Any discussion? Those in favor? Vote is unanimous. Any other motions? We have item D here. What do we have on that? What page? Is that? What page? 36. Yeah. 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 36, yes, I think. Okay, so. Now we need to deal Mr. with Mr. Martin, you. are we simply, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, Go ahead. Mr. Martin, are we simply adding this uh, person to the, as a T-test appraiser? Is yes, that correct? That is correct. Okay. I would make a motion to approve the teacher evaluation and support system appraiser as recommended by the administration. Second. Second. Motion moved and second. Any discussion? And you can find it on page 36. In the book. And that's Lola Moore, Emmeline Carpenter. All right. No discussion. All in favor? All vote is unanimous. Thank you. All right. Uh, rescheduling our um, December board meeting and January. Because this year we don't get out till the 22nd. Y'all are used to us getting out like that week at IM2 of the, fifth, of the uh, 11th, but we actually go to the 22nd because it's just the way the calendar falls. And so we've got that other week, so we were saying the 19th. 19th, 19th work for me. Okay, January recommendation? Uh, the January recommendation was um, 25th. The 25th, yes, because we don't come back until the 8th, 
The 19th and the 25th. January 2018. Okay. Because of the way the I would make a motion that we reschedule the December regular board meeting to December the 19th, 2017, and the January regular board meeting to January the 25th, 2018. I second. Moved and second. Any discussion? Ready to vote? Those in favor? And so it's ordered. So uh, it's ordered. All right. Um, Holly, we'll, I guess we'll, we'll converse to see not only in a, when to reschedule for this. We'll probably need to wait after the holiday. Yes, ma'am. Thanks, y'all. Enjoy y'all. All right. Any other motion? Okay, John. So done. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. First official special workshop.